Welcome back to the Tunnel Boring series, where we have gotten two-thirds of the way done with this thing already. The last bit that I'm hoping to cover today, and hopefully we'll be able to do it in just one video and we won't have to split it, the bit that we're going to go over is how to push all of the blocks from our smooth line up and then put them into a TNT chamber to eventually harvest. So that is our goal for today, just being able to finish it all up, and that should uh, cover the entire machine. Thanks again for tuning into this series, or if this is your first video on this one, welcome. Uh, we have several other parts that we've gone through on building up the rest of this machine. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and jump on in, and we can take care of the last bit today. To start with, what we're going to do is we're going to come underneath where our drill heads are, so where the slime blocks are, and we're going to break out those blocks. And we're actually going to create a channel that is uh, starting from underneath the slime blocks five blocks wide. And five. And we want this to run the entire length of the machine. So we're just going to go ahead and break all of these. Or if you are starting out and you don't have to have a solid platform, just go ahead and don't build the platform there. So we'll go ahead and catch right back up as soon as I've gotten all of these blocks broken. Now that we've gotten ourselves a trench in front of the machine, what we're going to do is we're going to go down six blocks. Two, four, five, six. And then on that sixth block, we want to create our new floor. Um, so if you're doing this in survival, you dig a trench that is six blocks deep, and then you need to make sure that the bottom of it is uh, non-movable blocks. Um, since we're going to be using flying machines again, we need to make sure that they will actually have something to rest against when they come down. Uh, once we get the machines in, you'll see that you don't actually need the entire thing to be, um, like obsidian or furnaces. But at least for now, I'm just going to go ahead and place everything. Um, if you're digging in uh, the ground, you could actually just leave it, because uh, as long as it won't, uh, the block that the flying machine sits on is not stickable. So you could use like one or two blocks of glazed terracotta, and that would work just fine. But if you are doing this up in the sky for whatever reason, or if the ground that you're on is not stable, you can go ahead and just create yourself a little platform of stability uh, for this machine. Why don't we get this all done? We'll go ahead and check back in and get on with the machine. Now that we've gotten the bottom put in, we're going to go ahead and start with the machines. And I think the easiest way to start this is we're going to go uh, from the rim of our hole, we'll find the middle block, and then we're going to go down one block. And from there, what we're going to do is we're going to place four honey blocks and four slime blocks. And we're just going to repeat that process the entire length of our drill. Uh, this is going to serve as the basis of our vertical machine, and it will give us a good idea of how many specific pushing machines we need to build. Um, you'll notice that I haven't given a specific uh, material guides for this one, and that's because every uh, setup is going to be different for this machine, because it all depends on how long your flying machine is. So there's no stable answer of you will need exactly 63 slime blocks. It's all going to be different. And you'll see that we actually have uh, two spares, so I'm going to show you a modified vertical machine uh, as well, one that will be able to push a little bit extra blocks. So we've got our entire line uh, going down the entire length. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to grab some pistons, and these are just normal pistons. Uh, the normal pistons are used, these are what will actually push the blocks upward. If you use sticky pistons, it's not going to push them, and so that would kind of defeat the whole point of this machine. And what we're going to do is we're just going to place uh, pistons all the way down 
uh, even with your slime and honey blocks, but point it upwards. So we'll have something that'll look exactly like that. And then on top of our slime and honey, we're going to place some observers. And you want it so that the faces are going away from your pistons so that the little tiny butt will actually power the piston. So if you update this or when the machine is flying, you'll see it actually fires that piston. And that is the mechanism that we are going to be using throughout this. So let's go ahead and place uh, all of the observers up and down this. And you'll notice these observers are going to be completely flush with the ground level. So our drill will come through here, and it won't actually touch this, so it won't have any issues. And you can see these pistons will fire exactly to the block in front of the drill heads. So now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the actual vertical flying machines. And then after that, we'll get them all hooked up and wire all of the different parts together. So then to start our flying machines, what we're going to do is we're going to come into the junction of the slime and the honey blocks. Uh, the benefit uh, when Mojang added in the honey blocks is that they can slide past each other without sticking, and they both have similar properties. But what we're going to do is we're going to use each set of these as uh, one flying machine. So each flying machine can push a total of eight of these uh, sections. To make it, what we're going to do is we're going to come down and leave a space block between them. So we've got one block underneath the honey and one block underneath the slime. And we're going to go ahead and place in sticky pistons that face up into our slime and honey block. Then we are going to place one more slime block uh, as sort of an L shape. Uh, so it's sticking out right here, and we're going to use that as part of our flying machine. So next to that, we have a sticky piston that faces down. That goes into a slime block, a sticky piston that faces up. Okay. So then to complete that, on top of the slime block, we have an observer that has its little butt facing into that piston. Then going into that bottom slime block. Go. We have an observer that faces like that. So that is how each of these modules are going to look, with exception of the one at the far end, which is going to be a little bit different. And then we do also have two extra uh, observers that we need to place. Uh, the ones that are going to power our uh, vertical sticky pistons, just underneath the, the slime blocks underneath them, we're going to go ahead and place in our observers so that their butts are facing into them. Just like that. So you'll see the little arrow points right into the sticky piston, and that is exactly what we want. Then if we go ahead and fire, there we go. You'll see that it'll fire the uh, piston, which then pushes that up. Then we'll go ahead and reset this, and then I will be back here once I have built in uh, all of the other ones. It's going to be the same process for each set of these. So underneath every one, we'll just go ahead and repeat the same thing. On ahead and I've repeated that same process uh, along each one of those slime and honey block changes, except for this last one. And this last one, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do something a little different. And it's because we have 10 extra blocks. And what we could do, if you really wanted to, you could have one flying machine here, just like the others, and then this little segment of two could also have its own independent flying machine. But there's a little bit of a workaround that we can do. Uh, that way we can put all of these onto one flying machine. 
going to do where we had four honey block, four slime. We're actually going to cut that middle slime in half. So we're going to change it from two honey blocks on the end to two slime blocks in the middle. It'll look something like that. Then we're going to follow pretty close that same idea. Um, uh, put an air gap in there with our sticky pistons going up. So this is actually a post-production Plutzy wanting to go over a slight change that I had to do uh, to our special flying machine, the one that has three separate sections. Uh, I realized that I had actually built it wrong in the middle of the tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and splice this clip in uh, showing the changes on how to properly build it. So same type of thing. So when we had our honey block, go ahead and essentially try to recreate this. Something like that. And have your vertical sticky pistons. And then this part was correct where we have our four line blocks. Set up like machine. Do this as close to what we had over here as possible. So we had it looking like that. And now the actual modifications that we need to make is we're actually going to use this space block as part of our flying machine. So go ahead and use that as one of the slime blocks in our flying machine. And turn ours sideways. So that in that space block, you come forward and have a downward sticky piston with the slime block, and then the up goes into that one. And just like before, we have our front side servers going in. Look at that. For the observers for the flying machine, we actually do one that just fires straight into the side, and it's actually connected to that four block there. And then this one, go ahead and put it there. So sorry about that. I did want to go ahead and make sure that I showed you guys the correct way of building this. Uh, I realized that it was a block too heavy. Of course, we can place our bottom block there. But I did want to go ahead and show you the correct way of building that. Sorry again that this is going to be a little mixed up, but we'll go ahead and splice this in the proper spot in the video. Go ahead and continue on from there. Our next step is to start to wire everything together. So the way that we're going to do that, similar to how we did the drilling station, is we're going to come down underneath, and we're going to place a block underneath the slime block. And again, I am just using this polished deep slate because I think it's a very pretty block, but you can realistically use whatever block you like. Then what we do, go ahead and place a redstone torch at one end, a repeater going into that block, and redstone dust coming out the side. Uh, it does work best if you snake it like this, because otherwise it can push uh, this piston to fire. It's not quite what we want to happen. Snake this. Again, the reason for this is that way, if any part of this is not uh, on the ground and out of the way, it won't try and send the next part of the system. Uh, it's just a little fail safe. Uh, that way we can have less parts running into each other. This makes it run. Okay. So coming out of here, what I want to do redstone dust come out. 
And then attached to that, we're going to place a sticky piston. On that sticky piston, we place an observer. Eat that. Um, for this stage of the machine, I'm going to be using the purple wool as my color indicator. If you recall from our previous episodes, each part of the machine has different colored wool. That's just how I keep straight the wiring for the different parts. So then we're going to take our purple wool. We're going to line, run that all the way back up into our input machine, which in our case is right up here. And really do this in any fashion that you would like. Down. This is the part that feeds in to our starter machine. I'm gonna run our redstone dust all the way down. Her just to make sure that the signal strength can get her. So essentially what's going to happen is when all of these machines are uh, gone, so when they lift up, the signal strength is going to break and the piston will retract. And then when all of the machines come back in and dock, it will push the observer forward, which will then send a pulse up into our ignition, which will then send the drills. You can see how these parts are going to start to link together. Go ahead on um, the priming mechanism next for how we get uh, all of these pushers into the correct position. Again, uh, similar to with the horizontal machine, we do need to create a little bit of space here. That way it will uh, trigger correctly, because if we try and trigger the machine, which is with this observer, you'll see nothing happens because there are too many blocks on top. So what we need to do is we go ahead and we uh, send, we send a pulse across in front of these observers, which will push all of this up and then we'll be able to trigger it using the observers uh, to send the machine. So we use their same color wool. So I'm just going to create a line. Goes across just like that. And basically all that we do is we're just going to uh, run a line of redstone dust all the way down. That's all that we need to do for this. So again, you'll have to clear some spaces. That way repeaters can go in. That way the pulse will hit the entire length. Now that we've gotten our redstone dust all the way down, you can see that when the uh, observers were updated, we did that little bit of space between. That's what will allow our flying machines to take off. However, that does leave these observers up a block, which does not issues, but I think for aesthetic and also just for practical reasons, you don't want to just leave them like this. So what we do is we actually have it so that uh, the observers will only fire to create this room right before the flying machines take off. And the way that we accomplish that is go ahead and we're going to connect our line of redstone up to the output from our horizontal docking stations. See again how all of these little individual parts are going to start linking together and creating this much more complicated machine. Very similar to what we did when we linked the other two parts together. At the end of the redstone, we're going to place a sticky piston and observer at the end. So that when the observer goes forward, we'll then create the pulse that will go into the rest of 
segment of the machine. So that's connected to one part of the machine, but we do need to connect it to both. That way when the machine docks on the other side, it will also fire the machine. Come up top here, a bit of this extra, and we have this one spot next to the redstone torch that also creates the same output just on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and run this down. So that way it is next to, or it'll connect into the same input. Done the same redstone line connected down to our input. You'll see that if the machine to come down here and this block would then be in, it would then power the line just like it does on the other side. So what we're going to do, it does take a number of repeaters for it to come down here, and then repeaters are one way, so even though this is powered, it doesn't send the signal all the way down to the other end. It doesn't matter, you could isolate this part, but if there's nothing up here, it's not going to cause any issues. So what we're going to do, go down, and now we're going to connect it to the part that will actually send the flying machine. To send it, what we need to do, we're just going to tack on to the end of our line, fires these servers. What we're going to need to do is just put an update in front of these blocks. And the easiest way for us to go ahead and send in an update, we're essentially going to have a piston push right in front of it and then retract. Um, I do want to note that I did put in uh, a line of obsidian on top, just that way as I'm wiring it in, it doesn't send the flying machine anywhere. That way I don't have to wait for it. To, I don't have to worry about it running away from me. We're going to continue line of purple wool down because we're going to be connecting all of these machines together. So we're just going to use a normal piston that when it fully extends, in front of the server for all of our machines. So now that we've done that, what we want to do is we're going to actually create a little bit of um, leg in the system. Because if we just loop this purely around, uh, this part up here would not have had enough time to settle uh, before it tries to fly, and then you're just going to get stuck. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in three voltmeters. That should create enough time before it tries to send the machine. Two for one in one video so far. Uh, this is again a post-production klutzy stepping in. Um, I wanted to go ahead and go over a quick correction that I had to do for this bottom part, where similar to up top, where uh, we have to go ahead and make sure that it's all timed out to fire at the same time. We need to make sure that we do that on the bottom as well. So the easiest way for us to do that is we're actually just going to bump this out a couple rungs. And we're going to essentially just add in uh, enough repeaters in the right spots to make sure that it all fires together. So, add in stone line here. Because if we don't do, if we don't have them all fire together, they're going to end up getting stuck mid-air, and it's not going to work out very well for us to do a little bit of timing work. And as I've said before, and probably say several more times in this video, a lot of this machine just comes down to timing. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and add in the repeaters that we need to. So this, uh, a default repeater is one tick of delay. So we're going to essentially tie in every single one of these, this amount of delay. We have one tick, then we need to place a repeater there. 
Peter there. So all of these get the same amount. Then this is an additional tick, so we have to add in two ticks here. Clicked it once to add in the second tick. Same for this one. And then this repeat here. A third tick. One, two, three. So now that should send all of these machines up at the same time, where it will then encounter our top docking station and then come back down properly. To build our top docking station, what we're going to do is essentially we're going to be moving obsidian like I placed on top of the observers while I was building the thing, and we're going to move it uh, up. How far up, you ask? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go from the top of our drill, where this line block is. Um, if we had four, we'd go up another row, but since this one's only three, make sure that we're in line. So one block in front, we're going to count up eight blocks. One, two, three. eight. On that eighth, where that eighth block is, is where we are placing our row of obsidian. Could use any other uh, immovable block. So if you wanted to use furnaces, if that's cheaper or easy, uh, anything that is immovable, you can go ahead and use that. We just need something to stop our vertical flying machine from blasting off into space. So we've got that. We can actually come down and we can. layer that we had put on top of servers. And I just think it's easier to not have your machines flying all over the place while you're working on them, uh, but use a preference. So what we want to do from here is going to be where the observers are going to hit. Oh, come down. And again, I'm using the purple wool just as a, a marker for this system, we're going to place an observer coming out of that. So that way, when the machine comes up, it recognizes that there is, uh, or the flying machine comes up and the observer lands, it will send an update like that. But we're not going to use this done. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and some redstone down. That way we can update this observer. So I think it's easiest if we go ahead and let it uh, fly up. That way we can see exactly where our machines are going to be. Okay, with all of the uh, flying machines now up at the top, and do is we're going to connect this observer output to a chain that will then fire all of these servers and flying machines to get them to go back down. The trick is we need all of these to move at the same time. What I'm going to do is actually the same thing that we had done at the bottom with the piston. I'm actually going to make this a little bit wider. That way we can add in repeaters so that all of the pistons fire at the same time. If you choose to don't put in the repeaters, what's going to happen is the, the flying machines are going to fire at slightly different timings. And then when this one goes down, it's going to get stuck trying to pull uh, this slime block down with it, and that's not going to work. So we actually do need to make sure that they fire all at the same time. So then the final timing for this machine, to go ahead and make sure want to put in four full repeaters before anything actually starts. So two, three, and four. And we're going to put all of those up to four ticks. This just gives enough time for once it registers that there is a machine there for all of the parts to compact and then be ready to go downstream. But then once we get past our four, this first station set at three ticks. Next one, since we had a repeater, 
between here, and that counts as one tick. This will be at one going into the piston at two. Same for the next one, it will also be at two. Going through, we have another repeater in the line, so that adds one tick of delay. Then this one going into this piston will only have one tick. Followed by the same for the next one. And then we get another tick added onto the main line here. So no repeater on this last one. Again, if you're going to be doing this uh, as a much longer one, you just need to go ahead and do uh, some fairly simple math of how many ticks of delay are added. Uh, each repeater is one tick at base, and then you, as you click it, you add additional ticks in. Uh, so you may end up needing additional repeaters or less, depending on how wide of a machine you go with. You just need to make sure that you add in all of the pistons to fire at the same time. That way it goes down properly. Now that we've gotten all of that done, that is both our vertical docking station and the bottom docking station. What we need to do is we need to create the area that is going to push the blocks out over our TNT uh, explosion chamber, and we need to build that setup as well. Go ahead and jump into that, then we'll be done with this series.